Growing up, I thought dinosaurs were so cool because they were huge and they were powerful and they were strong. What's not to like? And then Transformers introduced the Dinobots. So what's better than just a dinosaur? Well, a dinosaur obviously that turns into a giant robot. That's not so smart, which is hilarious by the way. And my favorite of all of them was Sludge, the Brontosaurus, which is a little bit ironic since the Brontosaurus isn't actually a real dinosaur, as we now know. Nevertheless, both on screen and the G1 toy was my favorite, and that's why I was excited to get this guy, the Transformers Power of the Primes Sludge. Does he live up to my expectations? Does he live up to my hopes and to the moniker of being my favorite Dinobot? Well, we're going to find out along with a couple of custom paint apps in the latest Got By True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's great to have you here again along for the ride. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, and of course I'm going to say subscribe. Stick around the channel, have a bit of fun with us here. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, and me everywhere. <clears throat> and now we have the power of the Prime's Sludge. Who's... he's alright, he's not the strongest Dinobot. He's not my favorite of the Dinobots. He looks the part except a lot smaller. I can understand the criticism that he should have been a Voyager-sized figure. I can even understand the criticism that people have had that all of them should be bigger. Maybe that'll happen at some juncture. In fact, some people have said that these guys should have been the Titan-class figure for this year. Volcanicus should have went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Devastator. I can see the argument for it. Out of package, he is extremely toy accurate. I put a few apps on him and we'll look at them closer. On his arms, on these wings, and his eyes blue. <laughs> I think it helps make him more animation accurate. And that's what I did. But anyway, how about I stop babbling on about this guy. Let's head over to the table and take a closer look at him. And so we're ready to delve back in to the world of the Dinobots. But before that, I want to give a few shout outs. It's a little bit overdue. First to TF Angeek. He recently did the POTP challenge that's been going around. Um, and I was wondering if he would. I was hoping that he would, so I'm glad that he did. Check that out. I also want to give some shout outs here to Targolis, Tech Guy123, Declan, Katie Cat, Weber, Matthew Martinson. Matthew Baker, Steve Garcia, Nathan Mackey, 6511, Kapil uh, Saxena, I hope I'm saying that right, Derek Valentine, uh, Brinette Brown, Shing Kwayu? Kwi? I, I'm, again, I'm really sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, and Typical. <clears throat> yeah, Typical. Them and so many more recently jumped on the train. It is beyond appreciated. It makes all the difference in the world. What can I say? Thank you very much. And now we have this guy. Now, growing up, when I was when I was a boy, and first getting introduced to this line, because I mean, let's be let's be realistic here. The whole reason that I collect this is pure nostalgia. Well, there's a bunch of reasons, and I've done a countdown list of ten of them. A long time ago but the primary one has to be that nostalgia factor because I love the cartoon so much as a kid I don't know makes me feel young again makes this cranky old man be able to be a kid again I don't know but I do know that sludge was my absolute favorite Dinobot probably not the the brightest of those guys which is saying something but he was still my favorite because I really liked the brontosaurus even though we know now that that's not a real dinosaur. But I don't care, I still count it. We've been waiting a long time for this, and he has sort of arrived <clears throat> with some controversy. A lot of people figure he's a lot smaller than he should be, and we're going to talk about that in just a little bit, but 
naturally, before we get into the figure itself, we're going to start off and take a quick look at the box. It is, of course, a Power of the Primes box, and we see Sludge up here in his dinosaur mode. I, I, I don't know if he's shooting a laser. It should be breathing fire. Maybe that's, that's this art's version of breathing fire. I don't know. When we come around, of course, to the back, we have the product shot, and we can see where his prime armor will go on. It's your typical product shot. Taking that out of it, we have another one of these hand pieces. It's the prime armor. You could put a prime master in here, or if you're so inclined, just put that piece in. That clear piece can be used in the hand as an extra, I don't know, blaster, I guess. It's the exact same as what comes with all of the Dinobots. These are instructions. Open them up, use them if you want, but I can tell you now, if you unfold these, you're probably never going to get them folded up again. I, when they're folded like this, I can never get them back correctly. We have a rather gloriously sculpted blaster here. It's the exact same one that came with Slug. I have added some gold to make it look more G1 accurate to his G1 blaster. I may even need to touch up a couple of spots of the gold on this that I may have rubbed, uh, you know, inadvertently before it had dried. But it's, it's you know, it's nice looking. He did, doesn't come with his sword, just this. Of course, there are third-party add-on kits already coming to light that will rectify that by providing all of these extra little bits and pieces for all of the Dinobots. It's kind of cool if you are, you know, that big of a fan of them having their swords and whatnot. And I bet you thought I was going to forget about the ever-popular collector card. It's a picture of a dinosaur, which, by the way, does have silver on his upper back. Note that. It's him in dino mode. This is Prima, Sludge, and it gives, <laughs> it gives his allies courage that equals the strength of his stomp. I don't know how you measure how strong a dinosaur stomp is, but hey, that's apparently what this guy does. Okay, and now we get to talk about this dude. And straight out of package, I had a couple of minor issues. The size being one of them, I do think he should have been a Voyager. Like I said, we'll talk about that in a second. And I felt like these wing pieces were too low. <clears throat> I didn't like it, and I thought they were actually going to be quite obtrusive to his articulation. So let's deal with one thing at a time. First, the whole size comparison issue. Before this guy came, really the closest approximation that we had gotten to a modern day sludge, officially anyway, because there's been lots of unofficial incarnations, but officially anyway, would probably be the Age of Extinction slog figure, who I have and did a custom paint scheme on to make him more reminiscent of this guy. And you can see him in there, of course, right now he's kind of out of frame because he is much larger. He is a Voyager. Let's just adjust this ever so slightly. Now, I looked at Slog and the custom work I did on him compared to the regular retail version way back a long time ago in episode 66. And I said that this guy was certainly imperfect because we have a lot of soft, soft rubbery plastic down around his legs. It's kind of a cumbersome transformation along with his articulation not being the most stellar, but it is what we had and he is more of a correct size. Of course, with the paint that I added to him, you can see how I put red and black on the chest, how I put more black on the head except for the very center there to kind of mimic the crest in the center of Sludge's head. Uh, there were certain things that I, I was going for here. Naturally, I had to take liberties because of the mold. and. Mm, undoubtedly, this would be, even if we could call it sludge, slog here would be a very highly, highly stylized version of the guy. As for the power of the Prime's sludge, well, he scales a little bit better with, for example, his wave mate, that being Ripper Snapper, I'm, you know. They both turn into creatures. One's a dinosaur, the other's a, a fish thing. But it's both creatures. I looked at Ripper Snapper very recently in episode 395. 
And of course, he would kind of go along nicely with his other Dinobot brethren and Sisterin, if we're talking about Slash, is Sisterin a, a word? I'm not sure, but here we have him with Swoop, my custom Swoop. Here we have him with Slash, who is pretty fantastic, actually. And I kind of put him behind at the moment. The, the guy who uses really the same mold, or a lot of the same mold as Sludge, that being my custom Slug figure. Or if you are a G1 fan, we all know him by his original name, Slag. I looked at Slug in episode 343, Swoop in episode 344, and Slash in episode 338. And of course, I looked at all of the custom paint work that I did with them. And just because I figured I'd throw Grimlock in there, I looked at him in episode 345 and the custom paint work I did on him as well. <sighs> you know, I, I think they're looking pretty good. Ar arguably, Sludge should definitely be bigger, at least the size of Grimlock. In fact, arguably, all of them should be bigger. I've heard people talk about that and Word is that Black Mamba is going to be KOing these guys, so if you want them larger, maybe that's an option. I've also heard people say that the Dinobots, especially because they combined, probably should have been the Titan class figure instead of Predaking, assuming that you were going to have some sort of animal combiner be your Titan class figure for the year. I still think it should have been Omega Supreme or Scorponok, but that's just me complaining. I could see that. In a case where this guy would have been the Titan, I could see Grimlock as a leader and maybe the other four as Voyagers. I, that, you know what? That could have worked pretty cool, I think. But that being said, I'm also pretty cool with this. I, You know, what I kind of had as a Dinobot representation before had a lot of deluxes in it, so I'm, I'm sort of okay with the deluxes. I just wish that Sludge was a bit bigger, especially since he's my favorite. Now, I mentioned that these two share a lot of the same molding, and they do. The arms, I believe, are the same. Certainly the upper arms are the same. There's a little bit of molding difference on the lower arms. The thighs, the hips, they're the same. The lower legs, they're the same, really. The back legs here are different than the back legs on Sludge, but it, you have a lot of shared parts here, which means the conversion is similar. Not the same, obviously, but similar. Largely the reason it's not the same is because on Slug here, well, the whole back stays together anyway. That doesn't really happen on Sludge. They sort of you know, re-angled things a little bit to make it work for Sludge. And I think it's a reuse of a mold probably done right, to be perfectly honest with you. So what about this guy? I'll buy his lonesome. <clears throat> well, in terms of paint apps, because of course we're going to measure his paint apps, posability, playability, and transformation. In terms of his paint apps, out of package he was a 10 for being accurate to the G1 toy. I actually took my G1 sludge and stood him next to this guy. It, it, was, it was pretty close. By the way, if you want to see my thoughts on G1 sludge, I took a look at him just a while ago in episode 331. I still love that guy. I, he was fun when I was a kid. He's still fun now. Oh, the joints on mine are real loose. So, that being said, what about the touch-ups that I've done to this guy? Well, I put a gloss gray on his forearms. They were, they were black, just like his fist. And again, the whole kind of hand and forearm of the toy was all black, but not on the program. On the program, it was only the hand that was black. So I added that up on his shoulders. I added black detailing in right here because, again, he had that. And I don't think I've done much else here in robot mode other than I painted his red eyes blue. And eyes are, man, they are tricky to do. You get a toothpick, a bit of blue paint, and you hope for the best. 
it's it's challenging, but uh, if I could do it, so can you. Anybody can. And I, I kind of like doing the, the blue touch-ups because he's not a bot. They, they were blue in the cartoon, and I do think it adds a little bit of extra pop to his face. Now, in terms of accuracy to the animation, 10. 10. I think it's a great start. That being said, because these guys now combine, and they never did, and because, you know, we have to consider them a little bit stylized, well, we have to also consider where the prime armor goes, I, I guess. There's a slot here on the chest. The prime armor can just go slotted in there. By the way, he can hold his, you know, his, his blaster here, no problem. If you don't want it in his hand, there's a slot here on his arm, so I mean, you can put it there. And I think there's even slots. Yeah, there's even a slot back here, so you can kind of put it in there or have it off of his back. <sighs> Prime armor, I don't know. It's not for me. I, I don't dig it. I think it looks kind of ridiculous. Let's take that off. <clears throat> and so we have readjusted to kind of forget the displeasure of the prime armor. I don't, I don't really like the prime armor on anybody. It looks shoehorned in there. I, you know, I get it. I appreciate. Hey, let's make sure everything can integrate. People love that stuff. But is it really integrating when it sticks off the body that much? It kind of ruins the silhouette. I don't know. Your, your call, it's not for me. If you dig it and you like it, hey, it is another layer of playability and I can respect it for that much at least. What about the articulation? In dino mode, it's not the best, it's okay. I mean, how much articulation is a lumbering brontosaurus going to have? And I do think he's a brontosaurus because the head is larger than an apatosaurus. In leg mode and arm mode, he's not the best at either. It's okay, but the tolerances are such that he sometimes doesn't really like to stay together. I, I don't, I don't think, so far I don't think him or Slug or Swoop are particularly good limbs for, you know, these Combiner War style of guys. I don't find any of them to be particularly great. But I don't care about that because outside of showing you guys, I don't ever plan to leave them combined. I really don't. So what about robot mode? That's probably our biggest saving grace. But still not perfect. The head, it can go left and right. It can't look up and or down because it's on a like a mushroom peg. Some people have wondered, hey, could I keep the body of the Age of Extinction slog, as imperfect as that is, and could I put this head on it? I know, I know, the AOE Dinobots were released with G1 style heads, but this is an actual, we'll say, G1 head, because it's really spot on to it. No, you couldn't replace it because slog's head is on a ball joint, this one is on a mushroom peg. It's a different connection system, so no, that will not work. The Dino head is back here. It's kind of turned in. It's your choice if you leave it turned in like that or you could spin it around and leave it out. That's up to you. I, I, I kind of, I don't know, I kind of dig it turned in. These wing pieces, you can of course leave them right out if you want or you can put them back one notch because they're kind of ratcheted or you can actually push them all the way back. Now, I think that kind of ruins the silhouette a bit because now he doesn't have his wings at all, but you can put them all the way back if you want. I'm going to leave them back there for a second until we're done with the articulation. The arms, they can go all the way out, no problem. They can go all the way around if you have the wings out of the way. I tend to leave the wings right here. And I mean, they still go forward and back, no problem. We have a ratcheted elbow to 90 degrees. We have a bicep swivel. I'm not really sure why we have a ratcheted elbow, but we do. We have hands that can, because of transformation, they can bend forward and back. I don't know if that's of any use. The waist, the guy has a waist, so that's nice. The legs, 
They can go out to the side about that far, but come on, it's dinosaurs and dinobots. Ah, you know, how much of a ballerina do you expect this guy to be? The legs can go well forward and well back. <clears throat> we have a knee to just under 90 degrees. We have a thigh swivel, nothing at the toes, really. He stands pretty well. Overall, for my purposes, here's the thing, for my purposes, I'm going to say his articulation is a solid 8. It's pretty effective, but remember, I'm only going to use him in dinosaur mode and this mode for my personal use. So that's why I gave it an 8. But for looking at him as objectively as I can, because I think that he's kind of lackluster as a limb, I have to bump down the score for his articulation to about a 6.75. So he was getting a 10, he got a 6.75. The guy's about an 8.35, something like that. Like, it, you know, it's still good. The size might be a knock to some people. They might not have given him a 10. I do because the size doesn't bother me. But that 8.35 might be down to a 7.35 if you were to knock him back because of his smaller stature. He's not stellar. Not bad, but not stellar. We will go to, I guess... <clears throat> The arm mode, let's, let's go arm mode, and then we'll go to, I don't know, leg mode, and then we will finally go to his dinosaur mode. I think that's probably the best way to kind of try and do this. Okay, so as with everybody, because we're doing an arm, we put his legs together, and we will turn him at the waist and of course we have a slot down bottom that's where his hand I guess will go into the whole kind of dinosaur and robot head section comes up this whole red piece comes up and forward put the head inside this gold flap should have opened up Close it back up. Now the robot head is inside the neck piece. And uh, I guess you could leave this like this. Or you could turn it around. That's really sort of your call. We take the arms and we bring them up over his head. We close up his chest. It pegs in to itself. And this is sort of what we have now. Bring his arms back down. Bend them 90 degrees at the elbow, flip in and flip in his hands. They peg in there on the side and really in the end, oh, I guess I gotta take out the combiner port here. And really in the end, I guess, boom, there you go, sludge is an arm. It's okay, I guess. Just to finish it off properly, we put the hand in there. Like if you, if you, I guess it's an okay arm. It's just, even with the double elbow bend, like it doesn't, it doesn't bend the, I guess it bends all right. I just, I feel like it's a little bit cumbersome, limited, maybe. It's all right, I suppose. It's, it's, it's okay. Sometimes the legs like to stay together. Sometimes they don't. Here's the funny thing. You have definitely noticed by now that, hey, Gapa, you don't have the tail pegged together. That's because I find if I peg the tail together in his arm mode, then the legs pop apart. I cannot peg both the tail and the legs together successfully yet. I... I, it's probably my own fault, and it's probably me just having something off by a millimeter or two. Maybe it's a slight tolerance issue. I'm really not sure, but I can never get both of them to work. And if I'm going to have something stay together, I really want it to be the two legs where the hand is so we have a cohesive arm, if you're going to have an arm at all. What about going to leg mode? Actually, from here, it's pretty easy. At this point, you 
take the combiner peg up, you take the dinosaur head, and turn it around. And, and I do think it's a good idea to turn it around this time. By the way, you'll notice that I have blue on his eyes here. We open the legs, we turn them back at the waist, and we, oh, sorry, we turn them around at the waist, and we split the legs. Now, we have the waist turned such that the tail of this guy is really facing the same direction as the body and the head of the dinosaur. That's, that's kind of how we have everything. You get that leg of the way, we bring up his tail, we bring it out to the side, we get this leg out of the way, we bring up the tail, we bring it out to the side. The tail this time is clear plastic and it's painted silver inside instead of being painted gold inside as some of these figures have had. Uh, if you have this black heel spur, which is eh, in terms of being effective as a heel spur, if you have that down, that needs to go push all the way up and all the way up. If you don't, you're not going to be able to fold up the legs. Now, again, in theory, the legs should just tab together and fold up and you have a little start here and a little start here and that should go basically into little sections kind of just under his toes. If you have slug, you probably know that those pieces like to pop out. Well, that really has not been improved here, or at least not on my copy, so it still likes to pop out. I'm going to try right now to kind of get it up there. It's probably going to pop out, and I'm probably going to have to kind of solidify it off, off camera and then bring it back once it stops popping out. We'll see. We'll see. Who knows? Maybe, maybe it'll actually work for me today. Put those together. Sometimes it's easier to do one leg at a time, by the way, but I'm going to... I'm going to try and do both of these together. Bring that up around. And see, it, it pops the chest open. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain. You got to get everything out here. And you got to really try and push those in. I'm going to get this solidified the way it's supposed to be. Like I said, these two little starts should go into the feet. I'll get that taken care of and then we'll kind of pick it up from there. And there you go, he is now solidified, at, or at least as much as he can be. I'm not going to pretend that these little feet pieces won't pop off. They may. Uh, but, and it's not even that it's hard, it's just, I find that i got to hold the chest closed, I have to hold the legs closed while pushing it all up together. If I'm lucky, it stays in, but nevertheless, you know the idea, you can see what the end result should be now. I'm going to pick up exactly where I left off, which would be continuing here with the tail. Now that you have the legs in, you can bring the tail piece down, bring the tail piece down. For dinosaur mode, as we'll see soon, they would go tab together and come up right here. But for leg mode, they're going to come up over the back. Of course, they tab into each other, or you can leave them if you want. And right now, I'm going to leave them, and there's a reason for that that I'm going to talk about in just a little bit. These legs here, you can fold them back out of the way, fold that back out of the way. You would put a foot down here and really this is sludge as a leg. You know, he has a knee for Volcanicus. It's, I get, like, it's nothing wrong with him as a leg, I guess, assuming that the weight don't pop these out. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Right now, if I was to put the foot on him now and attach him to Volcanicus now, I feel confident enough that this is tabbed in here securely enough that it would probably stay in place. But I feel like that's sort of unpredictable. I think that's a shame if you're into him being a combiner. For me, it doesn't matter. But it's not that hard to get here. Okay, for dinosaur mode, we just put this down. We take the tail and we bring it all the way up over and we tab it together. We take the back legs and we really just straighten them down. We take the front legs and really turn them around at that bicep. We take the entire head section and we bring it forward and we turn that around 
and boom, in the end, here you have Sludge in his dinosaur mode. I added silver to the gray plastic that was up here because it's supposed to be silver. I like the kind of added sheen it gives. I've heard of people actually using chrome for that. Um, you know, brave idea, great idea. If it works for you, I say certainly do it. I, I haven't used the chrome pen. I know that you have to give it a long time to dry, but I'm sure that if you're brave enough to attempt that, and you have the patience to let it dry properly, I bet it will look fantastic. Transformation through all modes really is easy except for tabbing these feet in. That is a nuisance. I was going to give it a 10 because I'm only going from robot to dinosaur personally, but because of those feet tabbing in being a bit of a nuisance, I have to pop it down to a 9. Now, that said, again, trying to be as objective as I can, I'm actually going to pop it down to an Eight, because I have heard a few reports now um, regarding the tail and the tail breaking because of that clear plastic. Sometimes it's because the pin is too tight in the plastic. Sometimes it's just been cracks in the plastic. And there is a fix for it. If you break the tail of your sludge, there is a fix for it. One that I didn't know, and I've never really known how to handle clear plastic if it breaks around a pin, but there is a way to do it. And I'm going to show you a few pics now and explain as best I can, based on the information I've been given, sort of the process of doing it. I have to thank Dragonfly for all of this information, uh, I think that it you know could help if any of these guys have a broken tail or if any of them end up with kind of broken uh, clear plastic hinges, this might work for it. If you have figures that have clear plastic that has cracked around a, 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 a screw or a pin, it might help for that, be them transformers or any other lines. So, like I said, I'll talk about that and then we'll come back and kind of clue things up here with this guy. So are you one of the poor souls that went and bought the Dinobots and you were so happy to have it? In this case we're using Sludge, although Snarl and Slug share the same thing and that is a clear plastic tail and you transformed it to dinosaur mode and in your attempt to transform it back, this happened. Oh no, you broke it. You broke it. Well, of course you don't want to tell your parents for fear of getting yelled at for breaking your new toy. It's probably the same reason that you don't want to tell your wife. Oh, I guess it's time to call Ratchet. Or Wheeljack. What? They aren't real, they're just fictional characters? Well, whatever do you do? Don't worry, there's actually something you can do that's a fix for this that takes a bit of work, but apparently works quite well. Now first, I should probably note that this involves some heat, it involves PVC glue, and a little bit of finesse. So kids, you probably will want the help of an adult with this one. I should also note that the two pegs that keep the two tail sections together seem to be extremely snug, very tight, at least they are on my sludge. It might be beneficial to sand those pegs down a little bit in the hope of avoiding just this issue. Okay, so the very first thing that would probably help you is to kind of remove the whole tail assembly. It's connected with a mushroom peg and you would benefit by taking that off because you sort of need to heat the pin in order to remove it easily. Maybe you can wiggle it out, but you might just break things up worse that way. If you heat the pin, it should pop out a little easier. Once you have the whole area apart, you want to clean it with some PVC cleaner and a Q-tip, and you're probably going to want to sand the, I guess the shaft where the clear plastic attaches to the rest of the robot. You're going to want to sand that around a bit so that it 
to still fit. You may not be able to get the pins back in there, so you may end up having to use a, like a small screw to, to take the place of it. It really depends, but you, you might want to sand that around a little bit just so you have kind of a little bit extra room to work. It won't be loose, but it will allow you to move it without the plastic, which will be kind of brittle after all of this, as if it's not already brittle, without it having to kind of flex too much as it kind of rotates around that hinge. Now let's get back to that broken tail. Of course, we have the tail section and we have the little broken piece of plastic. That's naturally what we're going to have to work with. You want to try and fit them together. You may have to use tweezers to help you along here. And you're going to apply PVC glue as best as you can. Probably going to need to apply it with something like a sewing needle or a toothpick, something very small. Once you have it applied, you're going to, of course, need to let it set. It's probably a good idea to kind of coat the entire ring in PVC glue as well, just for added solidity. Once it has dried, and it takes time for this stuff to dry, but once it has dried, now you can start testing the tolerance by putting it back onto that hinge that it's supposed to rotate on. If need be, take it back off, sand down a little bit more. If need be, reapply some PVC glue to make it as solid as possible. Now, I haven't encountered the need myself to do this particular fix, so I sort of explained it to you as it was explained to me. Hopefully it helps some folks out, but the real, the real trick seems to be kind of taking the tail assembly apart, working with some PVC glue in order to strengthen the broken area and of course put it back together and test the tolerances. In the end, you should be able to have all pieces put back together, color it as you see fit with silver or chrome, whatever works for you. And as was told to me a week later, it seems like it is rock solid. So there you go. Hopefully that helps some folks. So out. there you go. I don't know, take that information for what it is. I, 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 it was something new that I learned, so of course I just wanted to share it with you people. That being said, let's give a final score to this guy. He had a 10 for his look, for articulation, it was, you know, well actually a 9 for his look, because I, I'm gonna knock it because of the size. Overall, he was coming into the transformation with a about a 7.35. The transformation is mostly easy, except for these Papillon being a nuisance. I already said that that's about that's about an eight. Overall, Sludge is at best a seven and a half. He's a seven, a seven and a half. He's not the best Dinobot. He suffers because of the combiner gimmick. He suffers because he has to be a limb. You have to have that Voyager torso, and of course that's going to be the leader of Grimlock, and everybody else needs to be a limb. This is a perfect example of a toy, of a figure, of a representation of a character that really could have been better if they had just, man, just leave the combiner gimmick out of it. Not everything needs to combine. Dinobots are cool by themselves anyway because they're dinosaurs. And huge robots, plus they're hilarious. If, you, if you've ever heard these guys have a conversation, they're hilarious. They didn't need to combine. Now, that's just my opinion. Maybe, maybe you're of the mindset, no, man, they needed to combine. We need a Volcanicus in our life. And if that works for you, then great. I, I applaud you for enjoying the added playability. Personally, I would have just been happy with cool Dinobots. And here we are again, and at the end of the day, the guy's not bad. He didn't get the best of marks, mostly because there are imperfections with him. I wish that the way the legs went together and then tabbed up on these body pieces when they're wrapped around to the front was easier. I wish that it didn't force the front to kind of split apart where you need to hold everything together. It's not hard, it's just a little bit of a nuisance. I love his articulation. That's way better than I thought it was going to be. And I'll even say this. When you see him on camera or in pictures, 
he looks worse than he does in hand. He, he looks fine in hand. These back wing pieces don't really seem too low. They don't seem too cumbersome at all. And he fits in nicely with the rest of the group, if not too small. That's the big hindrance with the guy. I said it before, I'm going to say it again. This is an example of a figure that was, I think, generally well planned, but really suffers for having an unnecessary combiner gimmick. It didn't need it. All we needed was cool dinosaurs that turn into robots. I'm happy with them, but I could have definitely been happier. Anyway, let me know what you think about this guy. Was he a standout for you? Was he a complete failure for you? You know, I always like to hear what you guys have to say. Again, I'm going to say thanks for giving me some of your very valuable time because I know how important it is to you. It means a lot that you drop by here for a visit. I'm going to again say, hey, subscribe if you haven't already. It makes all the difference in the world and helps me out a lot. And of course, I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.